how to make or how I made a modern coffee table. Let's get into it. I decided to start with the hardest part and work my way down, setting the table saw fence to roughly 16 inches to cut a leftover piece of walnut veneered plywood for the kerf bent cylindrical chamber. After that, I set the saw height to a half inch and ripped half inch rabbits down the edges of the long sides, using multiple passes to achieve the recesses. Then cleaning the surface up with a chisel. To achieve the kerf cuts, I used a measuring tape to mark the uncut edge at every half inch. I then set the blade height to just below the final layer of ply and veneer and set about cutting saw blade width kerfs along the underside of my markings. Since attempting this, my first kerf bend, I've learned that there is a lot more science to this, with online kerf calculators and the like, but unfortunately, trial and error is just how I learn. Satisfied with the wobble, I taped up the form I created to keep the bend from gluing to it. And then apply glue to each recess. Before anchoring it to the form to cure. While I left that there to dry for cautiously 48 hours, I got to work on the top and bottom pieces of the cylindrical end. I again cut some veneer ply down to two 16 and a half inch by 16 and a half inch squares, one of which would not survive the project. To meet the bend of the cylinder and allow room for the piece that would make up the final side of the chamber, I marked a straight edge as well as used a compass to outline a circular cut line. Then I cut along my marks. Using the compass again, I marked a half inch off the edge and three quarters of an inch off the straight edge. And use those marks to guide the placement and cut line of the anchoring recess for the kerf bent panel. It took about three passes to reach a depth that would fit the outer rabbits of the curved panel. I used a straight edge to complete the end of the recessed arches. Then, risked the curved panel removal from its form. As I said, I've learned a great deal about improving this step, but was actually able to make this bend work still. Skipping over the disastrous second and third attempts through the same process for the top of the cylindrical chamber, vestiges of which you'll see used as marking guides later, I ended up breaking out the hardwood to complete the top of the cylinder, first ripping it down to about 17 inch planks, then squaring them.
While that dried, I got to cutting out the lid to fit the hole in the top. I ended up using one of the plywood failed topper attempts, but in hindsight, I wish I had opted to use some of my limited supply of hardwood walnut. To give a user something to open the lid with, I created a recess to fit this nifty flush handle I picked up off of Amazon. Then gave the lid a quick sand down before anchoring the handle in place. With the cylindrical chamber finally in good shape, I switched over to what I'll call the floating frame section of the table. I started by ripping and squaring all of the 8 quarter walnut planks I had down to roughly 16 and 3 quarter inches by 2 and 5 eighths inches. Then, realizing my mistakes and unplanned consumption of walnut for the top of the chamber left me wanting for more of these pieces, I opted to update the design a bit and use a little of that red oak that has been sitting there waiting for me. I chose a piece that I thought one squared would yield the right dimensions to match the walnut pieces. Then got to work rounding out my final number of frame pieces. Once all the pieces, both walnut and oak, were square, I got to work cutting a 45 degree miter on either end of every piece for a final length of 16 and a quarter inches. Then, to create space for the runner that would anchor all of the frames together to create the table surface, I set up some guides on the crosscut sled and got to work clearing the recesses. I used a chisel to tidy up the cuts before giving the interior faces a finishing level sand down. Then it was time to glue the mitered corners together to create the frames. Once the glue cured, I gave what turned out to be all seven frames a finishing level sand down. Before I could begin constructing the table, I had to make one last narrow frame that would serve as both a spacer and anchor piece between the cylinder chamber and the floating frames. I gave it a quick chamfer to soften the connection point. Then a finishing level sand down. and then tidied up the remaining unhidden ends of the plywood with press-on veneer before beginning the construction. To adhere the spacer frame to the cylindrical chamber, I used countersunk screws.
Then, to adhere the first frame of the floating frames, I opted for a pair of L-shaped brackets at the top, as any dowels ran the risk of puncturing the chamber, and a set of dowel pins at the bottom. I used some offcuts to create the brackets. Then, mark their placement on the first frame before routing the recess for them to sit in. Once I had a good fit, I cut away the excess and added countersinks on either face. For the bottom dowels, I align the pieces, then mark the dowel mortise placement. I used a quarter inch forcer bit to clear the way. With a snug fit on them, I anchored the brackets, and then it was time to get the floaters in place. I started by aligning and gluing one side with the runner. I used half inch spacers to ensure an even placement. Then glued up the runner on the other side all at once. While that cured, I got to work on these veneered pieces for inside of the chamber. I started with the bandsaw cutting a thin piece, then alternating cutting and planing to keep one face of every piece nice and clean. Once I had enough, I cut them down to size, sanded them, and used super glue and accelerator to put them into place. The last step in the construction was the feet. I started by cutting a pair of 13.5 by 3.5 inch pieces from square walnut. Then added a recess on either end for the screws that would anchor the feet to the bottom of the table. With those in, I used the router to round over every edge except for the four that would sit flush against the table bottom surface. then gave them a finishing level sand down. Before adding the feet, I cut the excess ends of the runners flush and gave them a quick tidying sand too. Then using a square, marked a guideline for the placement of the feet on the underside of the table. and anchored them into place. After that, I fought with my finishing gun to add a few layers of water-based polyurethane. And that's a wrap.
Don't forget to subscribe because next time we pull out the scrap wood to make these adorable earrings. Until next time. <laughs>